You are live and alive. Uh, welcome to the five people uh, right now on YouTube. Facebook Watch will open shortly. So we just made a verification. So as usual, guys, welcome. Agile lovers, agile loungers. We are in Cancun right now and Vivo de Cancun with, we, we dance, we dance with the sun. So we have a lighting. So it's more white than the yellow in the sun. And no, I'm not at the beachfront today. I wanted to have a quality of presence with you with a very strong internet uh, Wi-Fi connection. It's a five megabits on 30 gigabits, uh, 30 megabits too. So welcome once again. So you could actually say hi in the chat. I hope you have your lunch with you because you're going to lunch with me for our lunch of the agile travel. So we're going to do uh, about like 60 to 90 minutes, depending on uh, how many people uh, will be there with us live on multiple platforms. Uh, I know it's a Friday. I'll take the risk of doing it on Friday. It used to be good. Uh, depends on where you are around the world. Of course, the weather make you uh, stay uh, home or what have you. So anyways, so the thing is um, today we're going to have to talk about the... Agile travel, the new services, a new digital nomad concierge services that you truly really will offer you for the entire Riviera Maya, as well as the Yucatan, the Campeche, wherever you want to go. So our services is two branches, all right? And we might have some uh, guesses later uh, that we'll talk about it. So the first segment, all the way up to 12.30 Eastern time here, we're going to talk about the services and we're going to exchange with you and the chat if you have any question on how this work uh, concierge services for digital nomad as well as leisure and, um, and traveling responsibly, helping community air on the Riviera Maya and, and more. So I'm really happy. And the second segment, of course, is the 25th anniversary of Scrum. So let me see, because I'm not quite sure now because my mentor used to say it was 1993, and some people say, oh, no, Scrum been in use since 1986. So I want to see what do they mean by 25 years. So simple arithmetic. So that will be 1995. Isn't it amazing? So this is the compromise. So anyways, yeah, sort of. In my case, I'm using and I'm Scrumming since 2002. So once again, those I see uh, coming in, coming in here as user watching here, the live, the live. So as you know, at the Agile Lounge, we don't do anything cut and specific. It's uncut, it's free, it's open space. Of course, we aim to be the most professional as possible because we are professional, but don't expect us to fall down into the sameness the sameness of everyone, especially when we do a live like this, streamings on five platforms, recording it, and so on. And I think now, instead of just the chat, we're going to open a Zoom. The Zoom will not be visible. We will record it, though, and we'll ask permission after for people if we would like to do some uncut with it. So in my case, as I do my intermittent fasting still, and I'm eating at night around 6-ish, 7-ish, I just have an espresso with you guys and my bottle of water. So if you have your lunch, please unpack your lunch, be ready. Say hi in the chat. We're gonna probably, it's 12.05 right now, so I'll let people get in into many rooms. Anna, I thank you to be there for Facebook Watch to help me uh, with any question on that side and the restream here, I should be able to see it. And we'll open about 12.30. 12.30, we're gonna do like our takeaways on this Scrum Guide. And they said something like, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about it. And um, so let's just get through. So again, so if you're expecting sameness thing, no, it's no sameness here with Coach F. Totally empty compromise, alive, but very, very professional and very dedicated with full of intention to help people. So that was my jingle. My jingle, by the way, if you were wondering for both the Dare Real Agile podcast as well as uh, most of my YouTube videos start with that kind of jingle. It's the great artist, the great DJ Lensko from Ukraine. 
And this sounds called Rebirth because when I founded Agile Lounge back in 2016, it was a rebirth for me. It was uh, 20, yeah, 2014 to 2016. That was like in kind of a, what I like to call in Latin, the Novatio, the Renovatio. And uh, right now in 2020, as I predicted mostly day by day here in November, and I guess I'm going to put in the description after the live the link to that quick video that I did at the Crew Collective on 360 Saint-Jacques Street in Montreal, when I said about November 2019, we being enthusiastic about 2020, yes, and I'm still enthusiastic about 2020, despite all of this like collective event that blast us with this virus and so on. The thing is, you have to keep your mind set. And you know, most of you know, either you're my friends or my close colleague, that I've got in the last 18 months, I, mean, I, was, I should say like 2019, for grief to uh, go through, including my mother that I love, and I salute Adrienne. Adrienne was my mother, so... And even though, so I try to keep on and to keep on. Is this no fake? It's no fake. It's me. It's me. When it's time to cry, I cry. When it's time to rage, I rage. When it's time to be happy, I'm happy. But when I'm with you guys, when I'm with you, when I'm servicing you as a consultant, as an agile coach, and now as a concierge, yes, as a concierge in digital nomad work and traveling and responsible tourists, I'm always try to be completely and full intention full of attention for you, all right? So this is important. And you could be yourself with me, that's no problem. So let's lower the volume of our friend Lengso over in Ukraine. What is agile travel? What is a concierge and helping you to your digital nomad journey? As well as I said, very important, the aspect of traveling in time of COVID with uh, a life journey and, uh, and everything. So first and foremost, I have to say that we know that right now there is five countries very open, open for business, open for traveling, and open inside also uh, their countries. This include Mexico. There's Russia, Brazil, I think... Thailand in a sense, but we cannot go through. So Thailand, it's open inside, but not for foreigner. And we have Miramar and, of course, Sweden. I'm not here to debate or to have opinion. My experience in the last three months here in the Yucatan and the Quintana Roo is this is very safe. They respect the same uh, recommendation on safety. We wear a mask. Of course, I'm doing a video, so, and I'm alone here in the studio, so I won't necessarily wear a mask right now. But you have to understand that it's as strict as it is in Montreal, New York, Paris, uh, London, sort of. But people have another reality here, and they don't have the big government that we have in Canada and the United States to support them. So, so it's full-on entrepreneurship, and it's full-on help. But I could assure you that I did a tour last week with my great friend that I salute, my fatello de Lucia, Marlon Mercantil Villanueva, it's an independent tour guide here in Mexico. He can't be with us today as we anticipate, but that's not a problem because we're going to go with him again, see the Mayan community of Nueva Durango uh, and maybe in Siacan, I don't know. And you'll see, we all wear masks, the car and the, uh, and the, the little truck are all disinfected. So this is very safe to come and travel, even if you'd like to travel responsibly because we are also responsible for, for everything. So, so if you fear about contagious, it's not as contagious as anywhere else in the world. And uh, it's even like, yes, so you don't have to be worried about it. And just like, I know I'm struggling with the light right now, but I like to put it the visual way, a coaching way. So this is my raw vision board and my goal to be your, again, digital nomad concierge and responsible tourist concierge, specifically the Riviera Maya, which include Tulum, Bacalar, Playa del Carmen and Cancun, as well if you'd like to go a little bit further in the real country of the Yucatan, uh, at, at such place on the Gulf as El Cuyo, uh, maybe in Progreso, near Merida, 
So depending on your needs and this, I'm going to tell you how to actually have a conversation with me um, for me to serve you as best way as possible. So that was my great ID, my vision board. I don't know if we see because with the MacBook, I cannot zoom in. But anyways, so it's really draw, but that's the thing. Eh? You know, you put things on the wall and you'd like to achieve it. This is the agile way, simplicity and empirically. So agile travel, that's the brand name because I like brands. Uh, I'm an historian marketing and communication before. So concierge. So we have the digital nomad. I speak with them a lot and all around the world and people. And I just don't know, man, right now it's kind of hard to travel, yes and no. But uh, still, uh, they, they, they need some elves, they need some advice, so I'm here to help them. So it's a premium service for them. And then we're going to have like uh, people who could help you with homeschooling. Yes, because it is not just for a single guy or a single woman uh, who works remotely in, mar in digital marketing or that could work remotely without uh, being present and do everything on Teams, Microsoft Teams. Um, Zoom, Google, what have you, okay? So the thing is, if you have a family, this is not a stopper. You could come here. There's people that I could put with you, and they could uh, provide you help uh, with your kids, get in the garden, and, uh, and create a community of home schooling. It's not internet school. You could probably do also internet school if you like. But when we talk about home schooling for your kids, is one of two of you, the parents, actually with whatever the school gives you. So you help them and you teach them. I know it's best with elementary school. High school, they should be a more independent, right? So we, and, and this is it. It's again, agile value. This is why we call it agile travel. Agile value, it's putting yourself autonomous, all right? And help you in this, so. And then of course, when I talked about, uh, there will be uh, several independent tour guides such as Marlon and uh, other needs uh, with trip in Mexico and so on. So this is very secure, safe, um, COVID proof and also with a beautiful experience and responsible. When we say responsible travel and responsible tourism, we mean by this, okay, this is very important. We mean by this that the, it's responsible in the sense that your money will go through community and real entrepreneur, okay, that have no help from government or other big agency, okay? So, and it's also for you a, a good way to discover the real Mexico, to discover um, the Mexican culture and the Mayan culture as well. And these services on site could be offered in French, English, Italian, Spanish, I think maybe Portuguese and German. I have to check on it according to the availability of the guide. But truly, guys, it's open right now. And I could put you through very amazing experience guide uh, to make your tour. And when we say tour here, it could be eco nature tour. It could be a sociological, historical tour, including some uh, sites that are reopened right now, not just Chichen Itza. Uh, you could discover like Mayan ruins, uh, Tulum, Chichen Itza, and so on. And you have also the very beautiful park, Siakan, one of my favorite. It's a long day. You could go under the sun of the Mexican sun, uh, enjoying nature, birds, uh, chimps, everything. So. And responsible travel is that sense, okay? And we are also in this pandemia with you, with your safety, uh, with being responsible about this. And so this is why I, we won't have like a tour with a van of 10 people. Uh, expect something more like between two, maybe if you're a couple, it's become a private tour and uh, for a lowest price than a private tour usually. So it's the time to do this. And of course, I've got a lot of real estate agents that could rent you beautiful condo like mine here that I'm remoting, I'm working work. I'm, I'm a digital nomad. So when I say a coach should coach, what is the experience? So here it is, here it's me. So I got like um, someone in Cancun, you could be also on the beach. Yes, you probably saw my footage from the Cancun Plaza. This is on the Zona Hotel area in Cancun. This is a condo complex with a beautiful infinite pool of salt water and access to the beach, okay? It's everything the Zona and the resort offer at a lower cost, really. And this is my great dear friend, Carmen Bianca Pino, that will help you for that. She has more than 25, 50 doors there. And also if you need uh, a rental and Cancun Pueblo Santos, she'll be a help also with me as a concierge. And we have people in Playa del Carmen, if you prefer the, the life or the, the smallness of Playa del Carmen, 
I've got people there to refer you as well. And then Tulum, of course, the beautiful Tulum that is booming. But please be responsible. Again, think in terms of protecting nature and uh, enjoying and respecting Mother Nature of this beautiful Yucatan Peninsula, including Quintana Roo. So I've got I'll, at least these three major places. Plus, I have access with other people that have even houses and condo for sale if you want to make a big jump. So for me, I could help Digital Nomad for a few weeks up to the maximum of 180 days here in Mexico, which is about six months. And I could also help people who would like to start uh, purchasing something, apply for residency, permanent residency, should I say something like this? So yes, I'm here to refer you people because I don't know everything. I'm still learning despite the fact that I have true experience of about 17 years as a traveler here on the peninsula. Plus I've been coming here since I'm eight years old with my parents and the Chiapas and so on. So yes, I do have experience, but more importantly, I've got a very, 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 very responsive, professional network of Mexican and Mayan people throughout the peninsula that will help you. So I'm just gonna be there to send you to the right address, to the right person at the right moment for what you need. So I'm just an entrepreneur. So don't expect, please, because we have to create this value, this working agreement between you and I that don't expect me to do things for you or to do everything for you. No, I'm here as a guide. And, oh, Fredo, tell me, how much does it cost? Is it the price for it? No, it's COVID time, it's pandemia, so it's free. Like I do with my coaching, most of them are free, and it's on Probina. Probina in Spanish means pourboire or tips, okay? So you give me a tips if you're satisfied with the contact I put you through, okay? So there's no percentage, there's nothing, okay? And if you don't give me nothing, so that's, that's life. Of course, with all the effort I will have put to make some research for you, to find someone to, to get intermission. So that will be nice if you at least give us a tips. And if I break even with my other contract in my other business, and meaning that I don't need nothing to pay to stay here or whatever. So all the profit, if I made, will go through one of the community, uh, maybe of your choice if we keep in touch or someone that I know, Nueva Durango, TSAS, or Tizimin and the Yucatan. So the extra money will go through, through them. So I'm not necessarily doing it for the money right now. Of course, the business plan will change after the pandemic, but right now it's no hustle, it's free, okay? You just pay the renter, the, the tour guide, you, 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 I put you in contact, you make your business. I don't know their price, I don't know anything. They decide. So you, as the client, as a digital nomad, you happy with my advice, you happy with the contact I put you through, you send me a tip to PayPal after, and that's it, okay? And we don't talk about it. So what and how you can do this, there's a great Calendly, my virtual assistant. The link is in the description. Book your 15 to 30 minutes talk with me. We're gonna discover what is your needs, and I will be able to either on the spot, if it's easy, to refer you to someone right away, or it will be maybe, uh, it will be follow up by email about if I have to do some research or to make sure that I've got the right person of ability to help you out with your journey into the Mexican Caribbean. And yes, it is hot right now, especially with the spotlight because it's not very sunny, but it's about 33 degrees right now. All right, so any questions for the digital travel? This is the ring bell because we do a sprint right now. So this is the ring bell. So if you like it, please share this video to anyone because of course now we are live, but we are going to be uh, in replay and this will stay on my YouTube channel. So please subscribe to Agile Lounge. And I would like to say welcome and thank you to all the last 10, since I did a video last Friday, I think on the 20th, remember? I, I, I welcome 20, now it's another 10. So we're growing, I like it. I hope you love business, agility, conscious leadership as I am. And let's build communities throughout the world of efficient people, passionate people who would like to change the world of work for people first and also the world of business evolving with more business agility. So like it, share it to someone. And uh, of course, there will be other videos or short videos explaining 
um, our agile travel services and digital nomad concierge and so on. And we're going to be on site also, hopefully, in a couple of weeks uh, for you to meet some of the referee that I will uh, send it to you. So, Anna, tell me, is there someone on Facebook who have a question? Because I don't have the Facebook open here. I try to keep my, my RAM <laughs> efficient. No? Twitter, we don't. No, we don't. But we'll, we share on Twitter, but we don't have any hashtag today. Okay. So, uh, 1221. I love those numbers. So, I'm on time. So, I finished my first print of Agile Travel. And I'm open to question. Let me go see on the LinkedIn because we collaborate, Anna and I. And Anna, thank you. It was Thanksgiving yesterday. I don't know if you received my message. Yes. Okay. You know I love you. All right. So let's see here now on LinkedIn. Yeah, I know. I know that I take the risk of doing this on a Friday. I always do my my live podcast or my vlogcast or what have you uh, between 10 a.m. all the way down to 1 p.m. So I know it's a risk because Fridays are like this. But the thing is. When I'm fully work and I start having like uh, very interesting leads right now, so I'm uh, I'm happy. I'm very happy. I feel fulfilled because I think I'm gonna help very interesting people uh, coming soon. If it's not uh, for the rest of 2020, for sure. After this holidays and starting the new 2021, I'm gonna be like helping new people and continuing to serve my 26 mentees now. I'd like to thank them. I'd like to thank you very much, the 26 people, which is like I have agile coach, I have project manager who want to become more like a scrum master or a product owner. They want to become more agile, they want to put more agility. There are some people who work permanently, they want to become um, uh, an entrepreneur uh, or, or a freelancer. So I'm there to help you. These services, again, are free upon uh, whatever the tips or propina you'd like to give me upon satisfaction. So that's the way right now for these individual and these Zoom call I'm offering here in Vivo de Cancun. So there's no price. And at the end of the month, if you like your time with us, it's not just me because Anna and Elizabeth, they also do some coaching too because I cannot like follow up with 26 people. But uh, I thank you very much for your trust because that's one thing also we are building right now. Um, the KLT. And I would like to salute uh, James Hodge over at Next Level Coach. And I hope uh, to embark in their program probably uh, early in 2021 if I have more means. And I'm also mentally ready to embark in this very Next Level Coaches for Next Level Agile. And uh, they have on their website something called the KLT. So this is why it's not my creation, it's their creation. But I would like to know more about this and provide it because I like it. KLT stands for know, learn, and trust. And so exactly my co-active coaching right now that I'm doing without knowing their concept, it seems like so far for what I read, it's about this. So we, we get to know each other and we learn together because even the coach and the mentor is learning. And if we do it in a small group like I did yesterday, uh, no, Wednesday, that was amazing. That was truly, truly amazing to have like a co-active coaching group of uh, three Scrum Master and one product owner and we did talk about what we are going to talk. This, yes, 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 this Scrum Guide. What is the Scrum Guide? So I will wait about two, three minutes, letting go to see um, if there's any other. Yeah, if there's any other questions somewhere else. As we say, we are live, I'm cut. And this is important, it's people first. So I'd like to see, oh, thanks for the like here on YouTube. And please, yes, once again, like it, share it, comment, ask your question. Now, if you're live on this Friday, the 27th of November, Thanksgiving, thank you. Put your comment in the chat here. Otherwise, uh, if, if it's after the 27th at noon, but please do so in the comment and we'll be there to answer you, whether it's me, Anna, Elizabeth, and maybe sometime my great Samuel Ball. That is a way right now. You see, he's traveling. He's from California and San Francisco. And he's traveling, I think, to Brazil. Yes, yes, yes. But me, I'm inviting you here in the Mexican Caribbean, either to work, to work in leisure, or just to leisure, take your time. And we're going to also analyze all the risk of the quarantine when you come back home, especially the French people from France and the people in Canada and Quebec. But rest assured that here, when you enter, of course, you wear your mask. 
you watch your end, you take a cab, you take a transportation, and this, as a concierge, I could give you all the reference. Right? But this airport is very secure. Actually, when you get in after the aduana, uh, after custom, you will be checked at your temperature and so on. So of course, if you do some fever, they will ask you some questions, but please don't be worried because if you board in Montreal, Toronto or Vancouver or New York or Austin, it's because you were okay to board. So they will maybe like, uh, there's no obligatory test. There's no quarantine when you come in Cancun. It's very relaxed, but of course they are responsible. And of course they don't want anyone to come and contaminate us as they will also protect you not getting contaminated. The same with my independent tour guide or my little agency. The same with the facilities or the condo complex you could live in and the Airbnb contact that I have. So that is very important to know. Please, guys, move it to the canon. Non-risk. It's non-risk. It's easy to travel. So I know there's a contradictory message right now. I'm not watching the news because I want to like to stay mentally health. LT, should I say? Sorry. But I could tell you one thing, though, is... Um, is, uh, yeah, the, the news seems because people told me that, the rebuttal, you know. Oh, they say, like, uh, our country say is no only essential travel. Yes, but let's say you are getting depressed after seven months of telework, okay? And you are, uh, and especially some places up north have been told it's gray, it's ice raining, and so on. So you don't just escape the climate. The climate. You, just want, you just want, like, you're stuck at home working from home. So you could be stuck into a beautiful condo like mine, working from home. I'm not front on the beach right now because I needed something more central where I could walk to do my grocery and so on. So, so that's why I'm in Cancun Pueblo Santos, which is I like. And if I want to go to the beach, I take the bus like anybody else. Okay, or I go with my friends if they drive there. And it's about we are about 20 minutes that side, 30 minutes that side of the beach. So what do you want? So I mean, and that's the thing. So and when you work remotely. And we are more productive by working remotely. Have you noticed? Because yes, and if, if you just need that motivation for eight weeks, three months, okay? And even now, I don't want to say anything yet, but the 180 days could be flexible because we are in 2021. What if? What if they close the border? Not here in Mexico again. It's always Canada, United States, France, Europe that doing these things, okay? Because here it's open. They need the business. They need us. They need to please us and make us happy and safe and secure. So this is very important. So wherever you are on this beautiful planet, you could come here. Okay? You're welcome. You're benvenida. The food is good. I lost 20 pounds since I'm here in August 29. Can you imagine that? Because you have access to papaya, mango, fresh food, Good tacos, very less gra gra gra. Mom, I'm spanglishing. Very less fat here than up north. And the sugar, yes, of course, there's sugar, but you don't want to eat sugar when it's beautiful day. And anyways, you got me. So without further ado, it's 12:29. Seven people here on YouTube. Someone give me a like. Thank you. But no questions about the agile travel. So we are going to our other subject. I'm assuming. So let me just verify something here technically. Okay, so you have the feedback here, no problem. All right, so let me open the Zoom now for maybe some surprises, guess. So let's do this. And I will hit also the record button. Should I? Should I? Okay, so perfect. Should I record? I think so. And let me put now for the YouTube and Facebook, uh, because preferably to chat, I will prefer to have interactive questions like uh, an open space on Zoom. But Yes, I will record the Zoom now for the next segment of our vlog, talking about the new Scrum Guide. All right, the 25th anniversary of Scrum. So apparently uh, Schraber and Shutterland decided it's 1995 now. So for those who also always argue, is it 1986? Is it uh, uh, 1985? Well, now you know the co-founder of it 
it's 1995. Anyways, that's just days, that's just times. So on the chat, I put the Zoom link to join me in an open space conversation as I go with my takeaways. And um, just to assure you, yes, so I'm gonna record, let me see this here. I'm gonna hit the record button here because we might do some other capsule, capsule. But however, the live streaming on both Facebook Watch, Instagram TV, and uh, YouTube won't show your face. We're gonna hear your voice though, because there's gonna be interaction. So, and we respect your privacy. And then after the fact that we record, a recording of the Zoom, we'll see your face, okay? So if you don't want to have your face shown, please do so like this. All right, so you, you cut you cut the video feed, but you keep the voice because I'd like it to interactive because I prefer that to looking in mini chat rooms. Of course, Anna is helping me right now. If there's question popping up on Instagram and Facebook, she'll ping me here on my uh, iPhone and I'll be able to answer it. If you're watching live, of course, if you're not watching this show live, please now ask your question in the comment below. So what do you guys think of this new Scrum? guide of course now probably this segment is more for people who are already scrumming already uh, using scrum for some years so let me do something that i saw on scrum inc and scrum alliance uh, of course i'm no sameness but for for those new people and all the new subscribers again on the agile lounge youtube channel i thank you very much for your subscription and i will hope that you're going to be a, a permanent viewer of us and sharing our material. And please, also, we are very open. If there's any subject touching lean, business agility, Scrum, Kanban, what have you, any question, any topic you would like us to do at the Agile Lounge, please, in the comment, request it. It'll be our pleasure to do uh, this. And also, if you are a professional coach, uh, or a consultant in Agile and Scrum, and you would like to come on a Dare Real Agile podcast of all things business agility, you're more than welcome to contact me at coach at agile slash lounge.com or by any means, because again, you'll see in the description below, there's the link tree. On the link tree, you could, call, you could also book a call of 50 minutes and just hang out with me for 15 minutes. You tell me what subject you'd like to talk because the Dare Real Agile mission is to talk everything business agility, mostly business agility, but it could touch a big range of subject because we know now that agile is not just for software development. You know that, right? And business agility is a mindset of any business of any size, okay? And it's not about scaling. No, it's not. It's not about agile transformation either. No, it's just people, smart people, who'd like to work smarter, who'd like to provide a better experience, a smaller experience to both their worker and their client. Because again, business agility is the future of management and management that will become leadership in collaboration with an open space. So what do we do at the Dare Real Agile podcast? You come on the show, we speak freely, authentically. Of course, there's a topic. We try to talk about your topic or a topic you'd like to debate with me constructively, okay? No safe space, but open space. That's very important. That will be actually the subject of the part three of our great conversation with Michael Armand. So you're more than welcome to do a collab with me or to join into the show with a subject. And the subject could be anything. It could be something even like everybody in the Agile community worldwide is talking, but you would like to approach it with a different angle. So the, this is the only thing. There's no preparation. There's no script. It's, it's, it's no editorial at the Dare Real Agile. The only kind of editorial that I ask is dare and be real. So you dare a subject and you be real. And it's mostly touching business agility as a whole. And we do it with no sameness, freely, authentically. So you're more than welcome to join me. And so this is why I'm going to do right now something no sameness, uh, talking about this new Scrum Guide. I remember back in 2006, and please, guys, correct me in the comment because I'm, I love history, but uh, this is not what is important right now today. They, uh, yeah, so if they say it's 1995, they start using it and commercialize it. 
Yes, because they did commercialize it. That was Ken Schraber um, that did that. And if you don't believe me, uh, I think I will put in the comment the link to a video that I filmed in Austin, Texas on May 19, 2019 at the Scrum Gathering of Scrum Alliance, where actually Mr. Uh, Dr. Jeff Schotterland is explaining us the story of the beginning of Scrum, which was with the HBR paper of Tanaki Shawaka and how he requests the help of Ken Schrauber to try to sell that system. He was thinking of a system of project, of lean project management, then, okay? So when we say Scrum is not agile, in a sense, kind of true. But anyway, that will be for maybe another Scrum B or another debate. But the thing is, when they commercialize it in 1995, what they say? So for about 10 or 11 years, people were like me in 2002. I remember these engineer, they picked me up and they said like, oh, you're the CX manager area. I said, yes. And now the boss want you to become the project manager because you know, we always become project manager from any field of expertise we are just because maybe we have a loud mouth. Maybe we are well organized. Maybe we are good and follow up and we're good with people. So they said like, why don't you be a project manager? But these engineer, they have another idea in mind and they call it Scrum. And they asked me, we would like you to be our scrum master, not our project manager. I said, okay, what is this? And first I thought it was like the Toastmaster, you know, those guys who learn to make speech and to speak in public. So anyways, so, so, but none of us, even the developer, the designer, none of us in that team that we built know about scrum and there were no back then either guide or whatever. And it was just started. So I started researching on it and the first book on scrum I read apparently was the, according to Michael Orman, was also the first book on Scrum, write it, wrote, 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 wrote by Ken Schraber, the co-founder, and Mike Beadle, my ex-mentor, and also uh, we could say mostly like the founder of Enterprise Scrum, and we'll get to it later. But the thing is, so I read that book, so it was called uh, Using Scrum Framework into Agile uh, Software Development. So I tried to, I, I read it, I share it, so, and then, there was some enough information to say like, how do we build a cross-functional team and so on and so on. So, and we, we did it from the ground and, and more importantly, and the group of developer and engineer, there were people with a background in science such I, as me, even back then, yeah, I was still doing my bachelor in physics. So, so that's the thing. So, so we catch by reading stuff on Scrum <clears throat> that <clears throat> it was very empirical and Mean and empirical mean that you're gonna try and you're gonna do uh, try-ons on process and systems as well as in your code and the interaction with the business. So, so for me, all the way I start from the bat back in 2002 without guide, I said to myself, oh, this is amazing, I love it. It's more flexible than any waterfall project. And even like the, the those things that we heard from uh, Lean, I did prefer Scrum because it was right to the point and it was helping our client getting their software and back then and also any type, any type of product very rapidly into the market with meaningful value. So this is why I fall in love with that. And then since then, I'm a passionate agilista. So the guy, when the guy came in 2006, I was busy doing other thing, uh, but I was working in Boston part-time and also in Ibiza. So I was traveling between Boston and Ibiza uh, in that year. And uh, I was to a scrum gathering, but not a scrum gathering like we know right now. Uh, it was more like uh, maybe what we call a meetup today because back then it was just like forum groups that invite people to chat. And then um, this is where we met and there were like um, like a couple of course and And then we talked about it and I didn't even read this first uh, 160 page scrum guide back in the day after four years of Scrum, I was preferring to have interaction with the co-signatory of the Agile Manifesto and other people doing other stuff such as Kaizen, Open Space, um, uh, even like uh, these guys of Kanban and stuff. So it was like more the interaction, having a beer in Boston, Boston, lovely city. So anyway, so that was it. And then of course, later when I start building more into a consulting agency because I had other companies, but when I decided to offer not even that brand back then, but my services as agile project manager and 
everything that touches. So I said like, yeah, I should create content for my workshop. So I went through and so we develop, I co-develop and I co-create a lot of things uh, with, uh, with other Scrum Master and Product Owner back then. And we're building our system of Scrum base. And then of course, some clients were starting to be picky, asking for certification and asking for, sorry about that guys. Uh, so we went, we went actually through, um, okay. So we said, let's, let's read it. And we said like, gosh, after 2002, that was probably now we are in 2009. And we said to each other, we, are, <laughs> we were like five scrum master and nice sofa. I remember at, uh, at one of our clients back then in Vancouver. And we said like, are you kidding me? Scrum is simple to understand. Of course, it's hard to do when you don't have capable people. This is very important because if you remember the five values of Scrum that is actually still in the Scrum guide, hopefully, uh, of 13 page now, I love it. It's my favorite number, as you could see, uh, 13 page. So as I said, around 20, 2006, it was 160 page. And we said to ourselves, what the hell is that? Because we, we were expecting something like, less directive, more simple. And the way it's written to it's, I don't know if it's Ken or Jeff, but please, anyways. And because a lot of people could interpret it as we have to do it. That is and actually in our consulting, more than coaching, uh, we often have a CTO and CIO that uh, because they read it, they ask us to apply it as it is, as a one size fits all. And they don't understand that maybe their teams there needs more a DevOps culture and their other teams, they could use some basic of Scrum with whatever they create. And this is the important thing. And our signature pattern at the Agile Launch is, of course, we use the base of Scrum, but the way I learned it with Enterprise Scrum and Mike Beetle, okay? And here's the catch. I read it two times, this 13th page, since it went out on the 18th of November. And I also watched the video of Dr. Schra uh, Dr. Shutterland and uh, Mr. Schrauber, that's Scrum Inc. I think on YouTube did. It's a two hours long thing. It was interesting. Uh, the son of Jeff Shutterland was there, JJ. But again, for me, it was too conformist. I like to spark it even further. And the way I read it, of course, most of the kind of refreshing idea of wanted to keep it simple. Uh, as Jim I. Smith, one of the co century always aim to remind us, uh, the agile community that's not so agile because we complicate a thing with a lot of boards and a lot of Lego play and a lot of this, a lot of this. And we confuse people with terms and frameworks and so on. So, on. so I like the fact that without being purists, they get back to simplicity, okay? And um, like when they've been asked when it was the 10th anniversary, that's it in 2005, why we didn't do a guide because we want people to create and co-create something like I did in 2002. And this is a signature pattern right now of our introductory, introducing our client to Agile and Scrum is they don't, okay, again, please be with me. Agile and Scrum is not a thing you buy. It's a big idea. It's a big way to uncover new ways. It's a value system and principle that will help you take decision for the benefit of the achievement of your company, okay? And to, to also please your customer and please your worker, all right? To make people happy, which is give them every tools and every help and support necessary for them to be fulfilled, and when you're fulfilled, you are happy, all right? So the guide is a guide. So since the beginning with my other five Scrum Master, we laughed at it. When they redo an edition, I think in 2017 for the, or 2015s, I don't know. I'd be, I'm not keeping in touch with it. I'm keeping in touch with people. When people ask me something, of course I go read it, like now. Like now, because they made like 25 anniversary was a big boom. And also a lot of people start saying like, oh, Agile is old and Scrum is old, so we should create something new. Yeah, well, if you want. But that's the thing. My signature pattern at Agile Launch is we bring you 
the Scrum way of uncovering new ways. So it's a combination of the Agile Manifesto adapted to your context, your business context, and your technological context if you're a software company or what have you. It's all digital now, so you should you probably are. And but we also Agile Lounge, we also help people that are nothing to do with software. Okay, so that's it because Scrum is made for anyone. So I appreciate the fact that this 13 pages is not focusing on software development, but I have a B, B or even a C to give to Scrum Inc. video when they talked about it with JJ and Dave uh, Swim. They were getting back into the production mode of software. So please, guys, have in mind that this is business agility. But my first feeling after the Scrum Beer two weeks ago and people start chatting about it and I was seeing some taglines, my first feeling with the simplicity was two things that I spontaneously had. First, I said, oh, this sounds very, very, very much with what we tried the 19 people with Mike Beadle tried to achieve since 2010 with Enterprise Scrum. It's simplifying the language and not bother the client, okay, or the requester of job or transformation with all of this. Um, is there someone on Zoom? No, not yet, okay. So with all of this, um, as I said before, buzzword, framework, this and that, and this graphic, and this, no, 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 no. What they want, they want to deliver, excuse my French, they want to deliver shit to the market faster and meaningful value, okay? So like I did, and I invite you to go to my LinkedIn personal page and see a great review. And I thank you again because it's Thanksgiving time right now. So I thank you again, my dear client, Katya, uh, over at talent.com uh, because the review you made for me, it's exactly what I try to achieve for you guys. So if you read that review, it's gonna give you the tips of how much open mind myself and my other two coach are and how much like, in tune with your context, really agnostic agility, you know, because that's the thing. You don't have to do everything it's prescribed in any guide. And my first thing when I read it two weeks ago, it starts with definitive scrum guide. That made me sick, guys. Okay, I know I'm no English native, but I'm fluent in English since my three years old. Whether you like or not my accent, I don't give a Mm, okay, because I achieve and I work around the world with people with multiple languages. Anyways, that's not the point. The point is, I know some English native will tell me, oh, but you know, Coach AF, uh, definitive uh, doesn't mean uh, what you think. I oh, know. So let's see what uh, Webster has to say about it. If Mr. Schrober and Dr. Shutterland want to actually use this adjective definitive scrum guide by thinking is the most reliable or complete as of text author or criticism. Okay. But if they want to use definitive as definitely like a statement and saying that is the end, I disagree. I'm sure they choose the, the first, not the letter, uh, because I know them and I know they are open, but Again, I put myself in the shoes of newbies or even some scrum users, scrumming people who will say, ah, oh, you see, that's the definition, the definitive definition. No, it's not. If your client wants to do like over at talent.com, just to get from an experienced field scrum master who become a business agility coach, who became, sorry, and they just want to have some experience from the field and some kickstart to spark them with the four values, the 12 principle, and that we try to then, when we have the conversation, yes, don't use Lego to explain the 12 principle or any roulette or what have you, no. Engage a conversation. Play kind of a game of card or something and engage a conversation. Ask them what they, what they understood, uh, understanding. Again, I could go like to, no learn and trust. Huh? You're gonna know, you're gonna learn, and then you're gonna build trust within these teams. And and um, and of course now there's no mention anymore of the release planning and specifically that is it bothering me? No, 
But uh, will it bother some uh, web architect or software engineer architect? Maybe. So, but then again, it's not because the Scrum guys doesn't talk anymore from this 160 pages and then after the 27 page of a release planning that you as a consultant or as a coach or as a Scrum master with your team that want to talk about the release planning because they do versioning and the versioning will say like, yes, it's version 2.2.5. So we are going to release this and I'd like to have 27... Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? I, I hope you don't hear it because, uh, and I hope she'll be fast because now there's a, uh, ah, come on. Anyways, give me a second. Okay. I'll be back. I have to, I have to fix it. I, I cannot, I cannot have a live chat with you guys and having someone making noise. So I will have to close the window and get back to you as soon as possible. When we say there's no sameness, and this is live, this is it, huh? You cannot have more authentic than that. And yes, we could we could make the joke <laughs> when I said like no problem, you could you could come in remote work here in my previous segment. Oh, three people now. Hi. That's funny. Every time I go away of my screen. There's people coming in into the gym. So if you'd like to state your name and where you're from in the chat, and also you have the link for the Zoom if you'd like to uh, be vocal with me. So yeah, so now they do the lender. It's incredible. I don't get it because there's not even grass. Of course, it rained a lot in the last few weeks. But So where, where I was, where was I, where was I? So anyway, so yes, so the Scrum Guide, my takeaways right now, if I concentrate on the positive and the creative aspect is truly the fact that um, we have something simple. But my advice to any of you out there is don't take it for words. It's a guide. It's a comprehensive guide, guide not a definitive guide. And it's there to uh, actually, let me see on Zoom. I think it's being, no, nope, nobody here. So yeah, so use it and we will continue to teach teams and organization and even people and group individually about the empirical aspect. For us, the five value of Scrum that we are not adapting or reorganizing because this is the core of the things. We could interpret them according to your context. For sure, this is very important. When you are in your state, it's like if the definition of courage according to Schraber and Shutterland is not suiting you according to your organization culture, of course, you could actually rewrite it in a sense because we have to be creative and open. I have no problem about it. So because this is why we laugh when people say, oh, Alexandre, Coach F is so curious. Well, depends of my audience. When I say so curious because I respect the history, I respect that, like I said before, this key LT things is not mine. I've seen it to the next level coaches of James Hodge. So of course I will cite in. Then after, will I interpret it other ways to help my clients? Of course I might, but you, you have to, you know, you have to come from somewhere. So if people want to rewrite the four values and the 12 principles, yes, okay, yes, you could, but could you actually learn it first and then start adapting it? Huh? This is the agile way. This is the real agile. Is this window closed? Because this, this time my career, like, I don't like it. Anyways. Anyways, so the positive aspect is two things happened to me when I read it. I was a bit disappointed because people taught me, oh, it will be very simple. They remove release planning. They remove this. They don't have any, um, I don't know, the, the number of people in teams. So that's the first thing I read about it. Who cares about nine people, 15 people? The most important thing, again, is capable people, skilled people, People who wants to achieve, lions who wants to win, okay? To create Scrum team, you need people who wants to work. That's common sense. And they could fit together in a cross-functional uh, manner and help each other and ask for help because you're not God programmer huh? and you're not God creator. Creator and integrator work together. So you don't need a guide to tell you that. Please, 
that's a no-brainer, okay? I'm sorry, but I'm telling you like it is. And, um, and so, so, yeah, so take the guide as a guide, like you take a coach as a guide as well. So I could, I could suggest you a lot of things. So see the Scrum Guide, third edition, 25th anniversary, what have you, as a guide, a suggestion pattern, then your team, your organization, and yourself, with the help of that passionate guy like me, will help you to unleash the power within you and with business agility and conscious leadership, okay? These are not just words. These are practical things. So this is why I think my clients are pleased. And more and more, um, Bastien, Elisabeth, Anna, myself, we're going to do more and more smaller clients. Because, yes, we could help and we have the means to help big corporations. But big corporations, one, one size fits all, as they should not. And the hashtag is not my agile. It's coming to play there. And it's not my scrum, it's coming into play there too. Because being empirical doesn't, that is mean like you uncover continuously new ways uh, to adapt and to create your customer as you create your product or your delivery. And you have to be meaningful. So it's, it's the same thing. So is that, is that too much posted into a kind of a vision board and contract? So maybe yes, maybe the teams will say like, oh, this has been there for weeks. And nobody is talking about it anymore. So do we need something in there? So you inspect and adapt. That's the core, the five values, okay? Courage, openness, respect. Help me, commitment, and awareness, plus the adaptation and the inspection. Being able to even inspect yourself as an individual and say, I'm sorry. I'm sorry I hurt you. I'm sorry I didn't do my part of this task. I'm sorry I didn't ask your help. I'm sorry I didn't help you. So that's very important. The inspection will be able for you to create yourself. So see it as suggestion. If you take it, again, as a one-size-fits-all, as a definitive or complete guide, and you would like to apply page three that said the product owner duty is this. No. And again, this is why there's so much debate. I love debates. But at a point, like when you go into clientele, they want to achieve something right on the spot, right? We agree on this. So if it is, then we'll mean that please, the best way to achieve teaching and coaching Agile and Scrum is not to bring a book or a guide on a PDF slap it on the table and said, oh, this is the guide for the 25th anniversary, and oh, we should apply this. No way. You're going to be a loser if you do that, unless your client wants it. That, I'm open mind for it. But don't call Agile Lunch for this, even if we need to eat, because this is not my Agile. I don't want to work with people stubborn like this. I want to work with people who read it. We have a conversation like we could have them. Is there someone on Zoom? Again, 17 people right now, and... Nobody says I, nobody on Zoom. Okay, so I'm here, I'm open to discussion. I'm open to be challenged because there's no obstacle, it's only challenge. So if you see guide of any sort, including the Scrum Guide, as a Bible, you last and you last me. And I don't want to work with you. I might want to have a conversation with you to understand your point of view, but I definitely not want to work with you if you are not flexible because if you pretend to be an Agile coach or a Scrum Master or an Agile whatever you want, put the color to get it us, and you just want to apply the guide as you read it, I'm sorry, this is not a job. Point. Okay? And your client won't be pleased. I'm telling you that right on the spot. So, 1 p.m. Ah, oh, let me get back to the positive aspect and what warm my heart about the feeling I had till I read it a second time and I said like, no, finally, Dr. Chatelain and Ken are always like, I love them. I really appreciate what I learned from them over the years. But um, I'd like to dedicate it to my master, Mike Beadle, that is not with us anymore. And I, and I dreamt, I dreamt of him last night. 
what will he say about this? And uh, John McFadden, if you pass through it, and probably I'll tag you on LinkedIn, that I met in London in 2018 at the Scrum Gathering there in East London Excel Center, and I was into your keynote talking about simplifying the language. I so much appreciate a fellow enterprise Scrum and Beedle student that understood the, the understood the importance of being empirical, being agnostic, and being right to the point of delivery for our client. It's people first experience. Mike always have it in mind. The client and people first at the center of everything. And the rest is detailed. The rest will be something that we will agree upon. So, so I was expecting that the Scrum community around Scrum Inc., Scrum Alliance, and Scrum Org to be, it's really a lot of expectation, but truly I wanted to, to be more thankful, especially in the Thanksgiving week in the United States, of Mike's work and contribution to not only Agile as a co-signatory of the Agile Manifesto, but everything he did in all fields of production and business, and with his creation of Enterprise Scrum, that is config configurable any ways you want. I think in the five years I was with him, we did at least a thousand ways. I've got right now 938 team that I introduced to, let's call it Scrum, for lack of a better word, but it's Scrum that they construct that my 938 teams, none of them is actually being Scrum or Scrumming the same way. Do they have the three artifacts? Yes. Do they call it the way they call it in the Scrum Guide? No. Who cares about it? Who cares about buzzword? The best example of it, and I'm laughing when I see bank in Canada try to copy a bank in Netherlands that copied a system that was actually Scrum, a Scrum flat managed enterprise Okay, even with a sprint design mindset, the real sprint design mindset, not those goofy who would like to complicate things again. So that's the thing. S create a lot of things, no problem. Is it meaningful? Is it bringing value to people? If yes, perfect. Be practical. We need to be practical. Not faster, not just better, not just stronger. We have to be smarter and smarter. It's ways that will actually make you a sentiment that you achieve something meaningful. So anyway, like a lot of people say, oh, this is a squad, this is a squad, squad, squadification. Yeah. So I don't care if you call it a sprint, an iteration, a cycle, the ways. I don't care if the backlogs co uh, come on a, just a to-do list. I don't care. Hey, Mr. Pickle, good to see you too. You, If you'd like to join me on Zoom and be more interactive, the link is just above your uh, pickle things, and we could have a discussion on the Scrum guys. Is that you? Chris Ben. All right, so while Chris is joining us, Mr. Chris Ben from Pickle, the great uh, graphic facilitation. How are you, my friend? I'm doing very well. Great to see you, AF. Yeah, me Long too. Time. I know it was uh, it was uh, still kind of winter. I think uh, last time we spoke, and uh, but I still follow you on Instagram when I'm there because I'm not always on my social network. Because you know, right now I got a team of uh, like Anna. She's with us right now on Facebook Watch, so uh -huh. Anna is helping me posting things. So yeah, so um, but um, so That's glad awesome. glad to see you. I was just tuning in. Did you already talk about the shirt? That's you got sponsors? No, it's not sponsor. I made those shirts oh. for myself and my coachy to represent. So it's of course it's a, it's a football, and we could salute uh, Mr. Maradona. Uh, yeah, because I, I see I see Scrum. You know Scrum. The name came from the Australian rugby team, and um, so let me let me go back to Zoom because I have multiple channel open now. So yeah, so I made that shirt because. The way we coach at the Agile Lounge is sports way, empirical, scientific way. And so we'd like to, to create this kind of happening. Like right now, I'm standing 
so I could do some exercise because it's better. The lighting sucks today. Sorry about this. Even if I'm the Mexican Caribbean, sun goes up and down, and so this is why I have a light. So I don't know. And how okay. are you? I, I thought I thought it was, you were just getting a tan. The, the sun was radiating from you. You don't need the light on. <laughs> so how are you doing? Are you still in Montreal? I am still in Montreal. I recently moved to the Laurier area. Uh, got a new apartment with this big window that I can post up in front of and some nice plants that make for a nice ambiance. But I got to admit that I am not looking forward to being locked down for the whole winter here. We're still in red zone and I am kind of fearing how I'm going to stay sane. So Chris, I'm inviting you here. Is, uh, is a green zone, yellow zone in some places, very safe. And uh, wow. you could stay here up to six months. It's cheaper. When I do a grocery here for a month, it's, it's the equivalent of a week in Montreal. Wow. And, and I'm losing weight because everything is... Yeah, you look good, I was it's gonna say. Better, yeah. And, and truly, this is prior to the Scrum Guide type of live vlog because we are right now on my channel. I was uh, explaining, so you could watch the replay for the first off part, my uh, digital nomad concierge services. Uh, for anyone who would like to work remotely um, anywhere in the Yucatan Peninsula and also the responsible tourists because I, I'd like to help my friends here who work hard because you know in Mexico they don't have the generosity of the government, uh, they don't have social security and so on. So this is probably why uh, the five countries in the world right now that are most open include Mexico, uh, Sweden, Brazil, Russia and I think it's Denmark. And also Miramar. I heard that Miramar is very open, but I don't know. I don't know that much about Miramar uh, country island. Yeah, so. yeah. I don't, I don't. See, that, that's always a, a fear, I guess, when I was thinking about going to Tahiti, actually, um, where my girlfriend is from. We were planning on doing that. But then just like, should something happen, getting stuck in wherever you are and their local government, uh, that is that is one thing to, I guess, consider. Like, if, if it got way worse and everything was locked down, like, are you ready to be there for an extended period of time, I guess is yes. the question. And like, with Myanmar, I don't want to hit on Myanmar without knowing too much about them, but I, I feel like I would not have any connections there, probably don't speak the local language, and so if it hit the fan, getting stuck in one of these foreign countries without a safety net necessarily could be a bit daunting. Exactly, but this is why I'm offering free consultation to anyone who would like to think about it. Uh, so probably in the description below for anyone, like you, you see Chris giving us an example of question that he could have traveling yeah. abroad to work or even just for leisure a couple of times. So we analyze all the risks. And right now I did something funny the other day with a group of people here. 2020 was the, excuse my French, the fuck off year, right? And 2021 will be the what if year. What if it's open? What if it's closed? What if it's this happened? What if it's da da da? So at some point we'll have to decide uh, and togetherness or alone, what are we really to risk or whatever? Because I remember last March here when the lockdown happened and Canada closed its border, the Mexican government says, no worry, guys, uh, you, we won't apply the 180 days visa and uh, you, you just stay as long as you have a flight back to home. So, so I think the go Mexican government right now, and especially here in Quintana Roo and the Yucatan, are very, very open minded because you have to remember one thing, of course, like Miramar and Tahiti, I don't know, but Mexico, the entire country, not just the South here, 35% of their revenue is tourism, whether it's on the, the West Coast and Puerto Vallarta and especially here in the Riviera Maya. So they don't have the means, they don't have the same reality of, of course they, they take care of the, the, the health care, mostly of stringer, because let's be honest here, I'm not here to, to sell you the, the golden uh, and to, be, uh, to, to fake you out. The, and this is why, this is why me, I'm here because I have a lot of great friends here. I like to help them. As much as I, I try in the first confinement to help people in Montreal, 
but truly here they don't have nothing chris nothing they don't have the pcu they don't have the the the, the loan without interest for business they don't they have nothing so so i said and, and they're open they're open for business and they are really safe as i mentioned in the first segment of this live i explained things so so again if any people out there who pass through uh, this video right now whether you're live or not link in the description below michael and lee is there for you i could advise you to give you some tips and especially right now there's a lot it's amazing here how many canadians and americans are here and play out of carmen there's a little america man. there's a little america and thanksgiving was amazing as by the way happy thanksgiving my dear chris thank you did thank you have your turkey i i i received a lot of pictures of my family having turkey but um i actually had a bit of a canadian hybrid american thanksgiving and went and got a close as i could poutine which uh which had the fries it had chicken instead of turkey it had a little bit of bacon some onions and peas we always have peas at thanksgiving so this one had uh some peas in there as well and then obviously gravy all slathered on top so i felt i was getting the the same flavors of american thanksgiving all wrapped into one delicious poutine with some uh cheese curds in there uh, so, thanksgiving was, uh, poutine nice little hybrid hybrid event but cool. i think i might actually be having a friendsgiving tonight with a couple of other uh my friends up here in canada we're all getting together and cool. we're gonna be breaking some bread eat some, eat some cornbread uh, cornbread bread. I had yesterday this guy David. I don't remember where he's from, but because I discovered cornbread in Texas, right, with with jalapeno inside, and he made he made one of the best cornbread with jalapeno from here. It's amazing. It was amazing. I had like more than that, and his mac and cheese, crazy. His rice and broccoli was crazy because I was I had a typical south east southwestern Thanksgiving yesterday. A big turkey. Actually, if you go onto my Instagram, you should see a couple of pictures of this when I thank okay. him. That was like, yeah. And there was not only American. There was a beautiful woman from Barcelona, Spain. There was Mexican people. It was really mixed. But this guy said like, no, this year was rough for everyone. I want to have a traditional Thanksgiving. So we had turkey, a big turkey in a smoker, like the, the Texan way, you know. Yeah. And when he opened it, before he cut it, like the smell, oh, that was so awesome. So oh it will make God. a yeah, lot of them. Incredible. Yeah. Man, that's, that is awesome. So you, and how are you meeting these people while you're down there? Are there communities? Friends of friends, friends, friends of friends. And you know what that guy did? Uh, I'm not on Facebook personally, so I don't know all these things, but apparently there's expat group on Facebook. And he even invite any expat in, around Cancun to join him in his house. And there were two ladies, completely stranger. I remember one from Chicago, the other one was from uh, San Marino, uh, California. That was great. I mean, and they are escaping. They are escaping. This is it. Everybody that I met from abroad, they are either digital networking here because they said, hey, what the heck? I will stay in New York or in Montreal, uh, stuck at home, working at home when I could do it with a great Wi-Fi in the Mexican Caribbean. And, and that's it. So and now I would like to help those people for free how to settle down here with a good rental, a monthly rental, because that's the thing, it's very agile right now in Mexico. Yeah. Because yeah. it's not a country known for its agility, but right now you could, if, and with the help of a concierge like me, you could actually uh, uh, negotiate uh, something uh, better because of course, uh, people who want to rent an apartment, they will rent it monthly instead of uh, right. on the lease, you know, uh, stuff yeah. like this. Absolutely, I actually met uh, a couple of other founders who are in Mexico City right now uh and they just like went they both met up there because of i think some of the similar reasons that you were saying are you in the uh, founder institute uh, club is that what you said founder i am yeah. not in, okay. in the founder institute club no this was this was a uh, a networking application that these guys are building oh, yes, yes, right yes. Now. and i had met them through this networking application they were building and they were just like saying that they were in Mexico City at the time because that's where they decided to kind of have their team, their global team all converge to collaborate. Cool.
Yeah. That's great. So it's, it's super and, cool. Now, and can you uh, give us a little details? Like, what is rent like in Mexico? What, what would what would uh, be all all in? Uh, an expat would be paying monthly to live and work down there. That depends. That depends a lot uh, where you are, uh, what type of services that includes. So, but I could tell you roughly, let's say an average right now, because I didn't talk with everyone, every landlord and every people, but it could be like, let's say Cancun Central, uh, or even play at Carmen Central, which is more like a safer place to be, uh, uh, like what we could call it, like we are surrounded by people, uh, even Mexican people who are part of, a uh, that tiny middle classes of, of you know people at ease, so you could expect to have a rent maybe uh, in U.S. dollars maybe for everyone like uh, everything include Wi-Fi, electricity, water, and some maybe around between five and seven hundred dollars for a two bedroom. Wow. But but again, I don't want to that's to give you an average because again, if you talk with me and according to your needs, that could change and. Then, and me, I don't, I don't set the price. As a concierge, I just, okay, call Chris, call Carmen. She'll help you, and she will offer you multiple uh, apartments or multiple things. And on the leisure aspect, uh, you could come. Uh, I, I've got access to 322 doors, uh, which means like, I will refer you to people that you could rent, even on the uh, Zona Hotelaria, uh, Beachfront Studio. So it's a studio with a kitchenette. Uh, very affordable right now. Even with ice season, usually it's the ice season that will start next week. But uh, so it's way below the hotel rate, but you're right on the beachfront. So I mean, wow. and these are private condo, and I will say between three to four stars type of accommodation. You have an infinite pool with salt water. You have good uh, eight megabits to twelve megabits internet. Of course, here in town we go up like Villarreal all the way up to thirty megabits. So according, according is for you, so for leisure, you don't need that high speed internet. So you could be beachfront in Punta Nizuc here or at Old Bosch with very reasonable price. And all of those people out there, Chris, that they will like, oh, let's, uh, let's get out of here and let's take this uh, package from Air Canada. Why is that? Yeah. Call me, I will refer you, just take your flight, book your flight yeah. with whoever you want. And then after collection, uh, transportation, habitation, uh, do it even for two weeks or three weeks, what have you? Yeah, because uh, it's, yeah, because in the same time zone, Eastern, so you don't need to wake up super early or, or change that at all. No, not right now. The, the wow. and, and, and most of the region here, maybe Yucatan is one hour behind now, it's more like uh, Houston, Texas time zone. But okay. here we're literally on the eastern time zone, and when uh, the hour uh, will be back into daylight saving time, we stay on the eastern. So we are one hour behind. Uh, we never change the, the time in Cancun, so oh. it's always eastern time zone. So that's why. Nice. Yeah. Man, you're you, you're living in the future. That's. Uh, yes. And, and I'm I'm told. I'm I'm ready to buy a timeshare. Sign me up. I'm. Uh, <laughs> I'm in. No, but for your first experience, you could just rent a beautiful place like here. You see, it's, I mean, it's, it's not unplugged in everywhere, but I mean, this is very cozy and convenient. Yeah. I mean, like, uh, now if you ask me about the post it, where are the sticky notes on everything? The sticky notes on everything like, is uh, I'm learning Spanish. Yeah. I'm learning Spanish. <laughs> so, nice. so my landlord put me a couple of things that I didn't know in Spanish and or other words in the Mexican Spanish for me to. To learn it, so this is why the and of course, I have my sticky because I work in Ajahn, so we use sticky. Uh, <laughs> si, si. Si, 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 uh, uh, was it a kind of a Franglish, Spanglish yeah, type of it? <laughs> Uh, got you, <laughs> got you. But let me tell you a, a funny story. Two weeks ago, I was uh, at a friend place. He's a Mexican Italian. His wife is Italian. At the table, we were speaking Spanish, French, Italian, and even sometimes English. Right now, I try to segurar mi español. OK? 
okay? I speak French and English, but I just pretend I speak English, as you know, so. But the, <laughs> but the thing is, sometimes, that, like him, I know him for about 13, 14 years. Every time he see my face, he switch in French. It's like a, and when I start speaking Spanish with his wife, he laughed at me. Yeah, so that's the, the funny thing. So, um, like, you learn French. I think your girlfriend speaks French, right? Yeah. So, so I don't know if... So she'd probably be more supportive than any other friend. But that's the thing. When you learn a language, it's you have to... Especially French and Spanish, you have to go to the alphabet and know the sound of each letter. And especially in Spanish, because even a, as a French, it's not more easier for me to speak Spanish. Of course, we have the same grammar, we have the same verb tense, and what have you. But the vocabulary, I will say Italian is more close to French in terms of vocabulary. Um, but the way we could build phrase, but the thing is, if I try learning Spanish with other American, I will lose it. I need it to learn it with French or other Mexican. So that's a, but actually, if, if you come for a couple of weeks, at least if you know the politeness in Spanish, like buenos dias, buenas tardes, want to know, want to say tardes, actually. Not to say buenos dias the old day. Uh, hola, que tal, uh, por favor, uh, de nada, uh, mucho gusto when you meet someone. So, I mean, like, if you try, uh, you don't need them. They, they will look at you. They know you're a Viking anyway, so. <laughs> they, you're not even a gringo. You might be, you might pass for a Swedish or something. So, I mean, especially in Cancun. Cancun is very cosmopolitan, so. Here on this premises, there's people from Russia, from Sweden, from Denmark. And uh, amazingly, there's a guy from Kirkland, West Island, <laughs> that I met. So. Guy from where? Kirkland. Kirkland is a city in the West Island of Montreal. Oh, so so we are getting yeah. into specific like this. You know, we, we greet ourselves. Oh, where are you from, Montreal? Where in Montreal? La Salle. Oh, La Salle, I'm from Kirkland. So just, <laughs> 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 it's just so funny. No, no it's, it's pretty open. Like yesterday, we were speaking like three, four languages again. So it's not a problem. So people switch. That's awesome. That's awesome. So not to worry about it. Everybody speak uh, English, French, Portuguese, Italian, and Spanish here in Cancun. But not everybody. Not, not everybody, but yeah, mostly. I'll, I mean, yes. I'll, I'll amaze them with my single lingual abilities. Actually, Just all the all, all the green go amaze us with all it's single. Still, language. I'm still working on the English. That's. Uh, but you'll be surprised, all these expats that live here for 10 or 15 years right now, the American, they fluently speak Spanish right now, right now for sure. Okay. So, and uh, yeah, but there's a, no, there's a, there's a booming, the, it's booming right here, like Tulum right now. Cancun is pretty tranquilo, Playa del Carmen, and 17 years in my life, I never saw a Playa del Carmen so calm, so like empty type of thing. But in Tulum, Jesus Christ. Okay, no, November it's low season usually. It's the end of the hurricane season, and it's especially this year it hit us like crazy. Yeah. It's full of people from mostly United States right now because I I I'm guessing because I'm really disconnected from the news because I want that for my mental health. I don't want to hear about yeah. uh, regulation in New York or Montreal. So I'm sorry, I have Trump a lot loss. of empathy, but Trump yeah. But what I what I understood is right now United States we all need but not the entire United States because every state has its policy right, but mostly they are more free to move, and the airport are open for what I understand especially with those coming in, and uh, this is why like uh, the German and France season in August we lost it, uh, nobody from these countries and now what we see it's of course a trend of Brazilian Argentinian Colombian aids. A lot of people from uh, South America are free to move right now since a month only. Peru is reopened, so we have flight to Lima reopened. So, so it's, my, it's more like regional and local right now. Uh, but nevertheless, Tulum is, is booming with a lot of people. And so it doesn't look yeah. like it's low season and there's a pandemic. This is right. Well, that's why, that's why U.S.'s biggest export has now become coronavirus. Now uh, we're, we're, we're pumping that shit out for the rest of the world. So um, I'm hoping Tulum does not uh, suffer any ill consequences from having that many yeah. Americans. But you know, wearing masks and, you know, uh, air is, is, is a bit more, um, 
how could I put it? It's more control in a sense, it's more safer. And also when I spoke with Americans, some of are there right now on the compound, and they said, I feel more safe here than in Cleveland, Ohio. Okay? Yeah. Because they see like everybody is wearing a mask, especially when you cannot respect distanciation. Okay? The mask is mandatory outside, but the cop will not arrest you, whatever you're white or Spanish. There's another question. They understand if you walk and you walk alone on the sidewalk, they won't bother you. Uh, yeah. But every store, I mean, like the, the most mandatory thing is uh, your temperature. They take your temperature. So if you have a kind of fever or something, they refuse you the entry or whatever. That's so that's if you okay. have a sunburn, will that trigger it? No. But like this, I would get burns to a crisp down there. Yes, but uh, you're right. If you just want to go to the store after you lay down on the beach, you might um, yeah, you might be thirty uh, I don't know if Fahrenheit is eighty eight. That's that's interesting. They they don't do any sort of temperature testing here in Montreal. Or certainly in the States, I've heard. And here, and here, the funny thing is, some restaurants, uh, because everything is open, and but they respect a lot of restriction, and uh, they all shield when they welcome you, so on. So, but it's more relaxed, also, as I said in many other uh, small vlogs and videos, that the, the 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 context and the reality of sociology and economic relationship in Mexico is not the same. So. It's not like what I heard up north, uh, people are snitching to each other and so on. So, I mean, here it's, it's, they have the faith and the responsibility of people. And I see as more res people will respect more than I don't have my mask with me because I will show you an example. But I mean, like we could walk and we have our mask here or ready to put. And when we greet people, uh, automatically we kind of respect each other. It's not about mandatory or not mandatory. It's just about either we respect the distance or we, we put the mask if it's not. But uh, it's more relaxed in a sense that they have other things to think. They have to think of bringing food to their family. To So, I mean, like, this is not, and especially when the hurricane hit, COVID was uh, number seven on the list of priority. Yeah. So, yeah. Be, you know, so, and I don't see a lot of people sick here, uh, case, of course, uh, they're not testing as they test in our countries, but, but again, it's another reality. So, uh, but you know what? In my case, I feel even like beside the COVID risk or thing, uh, every little like um, illness that I had in Montreal uh, last year, like my my foot thing and my everything is gone. Wow. I don't have any problem with my. It, I mean, like I'm feeling healthier than than ever because you have the you have more sun, uh, the vitamin C S E A the the fact that you could run the beach, you could see, you know, me make a meditation uh, in front of the sea, uh, and the food. Of course, you could go to uh, Oxo. Oxo is the equivalent of a Kushtar on the plateau. Yeah. So you could go there and have a lot of cookies and sugar and stuff. But if you're wise enough, you go even a supermarket, the equivalent of Provigo in Montreal. Yeah. Uh, you have the fruits and vegetable there are fresh. They're from the country. I mean, nice. like. Oh. Oh, and that's another amazing thing you just mentioned. It this, uh, especially here in the peninsula, because I cannot talk for the entire Mexico, but here they are mostly self-sufficient with Chiapas, uh, Campeche, uh, these farmers from Yucatan. So you have a lot of local products. And me, that's what I do. If I see orange, I don't buy orange from Florida. Sorry for the Floridian who listen to us, but I've got beautiful orange from the Campeche here, so I'll pick them up instead. So yeah. it's the local. So they have an abundance of food and stuff and. So that's not that's a problem. Incredible. Yeah, and and also uh, that's funny thing. I receive a gift, a T-shirt as a gift, and seeing like T-shirt made in Mexico more than made in China, it's also yeah. another, you know, I'm just making a joke here. So, yeah. hi Chris, uh, let me just see a bit the little tour because oh, yeah, jump, jump back on in here, and, and I'll I'll leave the uh, sponsor message. This this episode of Agile Line has been sponsored by the Mexican Tourism, and. and <laughs> Environmental Affairs. Uh, we, we are having our licensed spokesman here, uh, getting everyone to come down to the Yucatan Peninsula. Yeah, please but, uh, visit us. We've got fresh oranges. We've <laughs> got beautiful sunlight and fast internet. So, you should have. You should have drawn it. Next. You should have drawn it. But the, but the, 
the funny thing, Chris, is we were in a segment of talking about the Scrum Guide. You know, they, they put out a new Scrum Guide, and I was giving my takeaways of reading this 13 page of well, what have you. I hope people will take it not seriously uh, in the sense of Scrum Guide is a Scrum Guide. But for the traveling thing, yes, rewatch the video the first 30 minutes. You get a lot of tips, and in the description, you have the link to contact me, and I'll be able to put you through a large professional network of people for tours, leisure, working, homeschooling too. We have contact to help people with family because it's not just for nice couple like Chris here with his girlfriend. If you have kids, you could do homeschooling and even internet school, but homeschooling is not internet school. It's, it's the parents all together. They create a community and they help each other in mathematics, language, and what have you, uh, according to the course. So yeah, there's a facilities here that help people gather together and have homeschooling for your kids while the other parent works and they interchange the other. So my network is for everything. I, I'm a concierge. I don't do anything, but I will refer you to the right people according to your need. I'm a connector, exactly. They're connector. You make people's lives better. And yeah. That's, that's what I aim to do. And uh, with a smile on my face, like the Joker was saying. So I thank you for your, for your visit. I was glad that I just uh, happened upon YouTube. I saw that you were live now, tuned in, and I left a Are you message. Are you a subscriber? Are you a subscriber to the Agile Now uh, YouTube channel? Ah, oh, cool. I didn't know that because I don't see yeah. all my subscribers. Oh, nice. So like Chris, like Chris, exactly. Hit the bell. You'll be notified or you'll see me. And uh, like this video, share it to someone to spark them into business agility and more because now we, we do so many things with the qualificative agile. Agile means being flexible, open, and great. Great for yourself. Love yourself. It's important. You'll be able to love others better. If you know what I say. Is that right? Yeah. All right, then. So thank you, Chris. Cheers. Thanks for having me, man. All right, guys. So that was Chris Ben from Pickle, the nice application from Pickle. Um, that we did some collaboration in spring. So just to wrap up, because right now the full streaming is 90 minutes. Uh, I see seven people. Is there other people who would like to do like Chris and join me for a conversation, whether it's about agile travel or the new Scrum Guide? And I think uh, before I welcome Chris, I was going to tell you um, uh, the positive aspect that the Scrum Guide, even if I did some criticism takeaways of uh, the risk of people being more um, applying it by the book if then you'll be so it's our responsibility us the scrummy and the agile coach to spark you to uncover new ways and my feeling yes john mcfadden before chris came i was talking about my great colleague in london uk john mcfadden with his nice workshop uh paying tribute to mike's works and also the 17 other guys such as simon roberts sue that i salute in passage and and uh, Barbara Mizur, that now it's part of uh, the Scrum at Scale and so on. So it's great mind comes alive and come together in an open space and they co-create something. So I really appreciate the fact that John McFadden at Agile Center, I think, I will review it to make sure it's his right company uh, over in London. And I was really pleased to see him talking about the simplification of the language with Enterprise Scrum. And according to the talk before I read it last week, uh, this new edition of the Scrum Beer, I was uh, actually um, looking at uh, the fact that I was expecting, because I know Jeff is paying tribute to his uh, ancient colleague, Mike, uh, and his ex, uh, his ex mentee because Mike loved Jeff Chateaulin so much. Uh, they worked closely together, and uh, yeah. And, and Mike Beadle was by far the first uh, user of Scrum back in 1995, 1996. So that's the thing, this is why, and because of his background in physics, like yours truly, uh, we had a more uh, and a better comprehensive uh, way of Scrum with the subsension. Eh? Again, the dynamic of interrelation. This is very important when you put people first in their interaction together. So this is it like, I kind of please it's back to my favorite number of 13 page. But then again, be careful because uh, you cannot jump in into a client like John McFadden was saying in his workshop. And then when I said, when I meet a new client, no, you don't need a product owner. No, you don't need something. What you need is first, as a consultant, you need to listen to your client. And then after that, you will be able to make su 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 ah, sorry, suggestion. 
about what they could actually unfold and learn empirically towards the evil. And then after you go back to your client and you help them on demand. So that's the, the future of war, even for a consultant. So, so this is why the hashtag, not my agile, not my scrum, for those who expect me to be locked into an office or to a place, even remotely with Zoom right now because of the pandemic, there's no way, there's no way that this is my agile for 35 hours a week. No, I prefer to help many organizations and many teams on demand to spark them and to train them. Of course, if we have a mandate that uh, with a lot of people like I did, I, I could still do big cooperation, but again, is there capable people? Is there people willing to truly transform themselves and transform their business? And with capable people to help them achieve this. So let's do it and togetherness. So on that, Anna, tell me, Facebook, watch questions, questions on, on Instagram, questions somewhere else. No, it's really calm. Nice Friday afternoon for you guys, wherever you are in this blue dot. So Coach F here is signing off. So again, thank you very much for all of you who passed for all the likes you're gonna give us and also share this video to spark anyone on Agile Travel and the meaning of Scrum. And let's keep it simple. And remember, the last S and KISS is for smarter. Keep it simple and smarter. See you soon, see you probably next Friday with another capsule on Business Agility. And I uh, will see you soon on Zoom also. Take your call, cheers.